Google just dropped a surprise Gemini update that turns web app coding into a one-prompt magic trick, weeks before I.O. Apple's secretly striking a deal to stuff that same AI into iPhones. Meanwhile, OpenAI is tearing up its corporate plans, slashing Microsoft's cut, and casually spending $3 billion to buy a coding startup. And that's not even the wild part. Because HeyGen just launched avatars so real they'll freak you out, Light Tricks dropped a Hollywood-level video model you can run on your laptop, and a new music AI just made four-minute tracks in 20 seconds a reality. Yeah, the last few days in AI have been pure chaos in the best way possible, so let's talk about it. Hold up, before we go any further, this is big. We just launched our most advanced course yet inside the paid school community, and it's made for creators who actually want to build and cash in on AI avatars, influencers, and digital personas. If you're ready to level up and turn all this AI hype into something real and profitable, hit the link below, don't miss it. So yesterday, Google basically shouted surprise and pushed an early preview of Gemini 2.5 Pro, the i slash O edition, out the door a couple of weeks ahead of schedule. People at Google's AI Studio are already calling it the Web Dev Arena Champ because it jumped 147 ELO points over the previous build. That ELO thing is basically a popularity contest judged by humans on how nice and functional your generated web apps look, and the new score plants Gemini on top of the leaderboard. It's also flexing an 84.8% on the video MME benchmark, which measures how well a model actually understands what's happening in video clips instead of just pretending. Michael Trolley, the Cursor CEO who lives inside VS Code, basically, said internally they're seeing far fewer botched tool calls, meaning the model finally stops hallucinating that a function exists when it doesn't. Tulsi Doshi, who runs product for Gemini, claims they rushed the release because devs wouldn't stop begging for it. And I kind of believe her. If you're playing with the Gemini API right now, you get the new model automatically in Google AI Studio, Vertex AI, and the consumer Gemini app where the Canvas feature lives, so you can drag boxes around and have the bot spit React code on the fly. Oh, and the crazy part, the context window is still 1 million tokens. Basically an hour of 4K video or 11 hours of audio. And Google says they're aiming at 2 million now, while Google's busy leveling up Gemini, Apple's been watching from the sidelines thinking, hmm, maybe we borrow that for a minute. According to people familiar with the talks, Apple intelligence on iOS 19 is set to integrate Gemini, at least temporarily. Remember, Samsung's Galaxy S25 has already been bragging about Gemini in its camera app. So Cupertino doesn't want to look slow when the iPhone 17 lands this fall. Uh, Sundar Pichai hinted they are basically at the handshake stage. The idea is that Siri and all the fancy onboard models Apple's been teasing just aren't cooking fast enough, so Gemini gives them a booster shot. Analysts figure Apple will revert to its own stack once those gaps close, but for now, you might actually get Google's large language mojo inside iOS the same way you already get Google Maps. It's a bit funny. Apple keeps bragging about privacy islands and running everything on device, yet here they are calling up Mountain View for reinforcements because, well, competition. And for the retail side, think bigger baskets at checkout. If your phone suddenly crafts shopping lists and augmented reality product demos that don't lag. While Google and Apple trade high fives, OpenAI just ripped off its own corporate band-aid. Sam Altman wrote a letter to staff saying, in effect, look, we tried flirting with the idea of a fully separate for-profit arm, but nah, the nonprofit stays in charge. You remember the November 2023 drama when Sam got booted for a weekend and everyone started sweating governance? That aftershock never really faded, so Monday's statement locks in the nonprofit as the controlling shareholder of the Public Benefit Corporation rather than spinning it out. Brett Taylor, who chairs the board, said they even worked with the Attorneys General of Delaware and California to ensure everything stays aligned with OpenAI's original nonprofit mission, just to avoid any accusations of straying off course. 
But Elon Musk, predictably, is still suing. He originally filed the lawsuit over OpenAI's plan to shift toward a for-profit model, and now that they've scrapped those plans entirely and doubled down on nonprofit control, he's still suing. He's clinging to a fight that no longer exists, and honestly, it's starting to feel like a tantrum in slow motion. Sam Altman brushed it off, basically saying, we've got bigger things to deal with, like scaling enough GPUs to meet global demand. Money still talks, though, and that's where OpenAI's second bombshell lands. According to leaked investor slides, they're slicing Microsoft's revenue share. Under the current deal, 20% of OpenAI's top line flows to Redmond through 2030, but OpenAI now says that drops to 10% by decade's end, and it may shrink further if they hit certain volume tier. Microsoft's cool with it publicly because they still want first dibs on the tech, but you can feel the renegotiation tension simmering. Meanwhile, OpenAI's trying to raise another 40 billion at a 300 billion valuation, soft bank style, so they need that revenue margin any way they can carve it. Which brings us to the third headline. OpenAI is buying Windsurf. Yeah, that's Codium's rebrand for about 3 billion bucks, easily its biggest acquisition yet. Windsurf was last valued at 1.25 billion in August, so that's a tasty markup. The tool's whole gimmick is real-time code completion plus a neat canvas view that lets you and the bot edit the same snippet side by side. By swallowing Windsurf, OpenAI beefs up ChatGPT's developer mode, competes head-on with GitHub Copilot, Anthropic's Claude-powered features and Cursor's own IDE plugin. All right, remember ChatGPT Pro already ships a code interpreter and small-scale Canvas collab space, but the Windsurf tech means broader language support and possibly a richer offline experience. OpenAI claims ChatGPT now has over 400 million weekly active users, up 100 million since December, so giving that crowd first-class coding toys matters if they want to monetize beyond the 999 subscription. And now let's jump to the fun stuff you'll actually see on screen. HeyGen just rolled out Avatar 4 and people are calling it the Upload One Selfie and Watch Yourself Talks update. You literally feed it a single photo and a voice script, maybe a 10 second WAV file, and the new audio to expression engine maps your tone, rhythm, and pauses onto hyper real facial motion, real enough that early testers on Twitter or X, whatever, are dropping microfilms of themselves, their pets, even aliens with lip sync that doesn't jitter. One reviewer said, no words, and posted a 30-frame clip that looks like a Hollywood ADR session. The bigger idea is that this isn't animation in the Pixar sense, it's direct expression transfer. If you hate being on camera, now you can send your avatar to present your quarterly slide deck while you sip tea off screen. Not to be outdone, light tricks. Those guys behind Facetune just open sourced LTX Video 13B, a 13 billion parameter video model that they claim runs on consumer GPUs. The original LTXV had only 2 billion parameters but made headlines last November for spitting out 5 second clips on a gaming laptop. The new ref jumps in size yet somehow still flies thanks to some Something called the UE Efficient Q8 kernel. It layers frames the way an artist starts with a pencil outline before dropping paint, a multi-scale rendering approach that lets you refine scenes step by step and speeds final rendering up to 30 times faster than similarly sized models. You can do camera motion curves, multi-shot sequencing, keyframe edits, and because it's open source, the weights sit on Hugging Face under a license that's free for orgs making under 10 million a year. Another key piece, Lightrix sources its training set from Getty and Shutterstock, meaning you can ship the output commercially without sweating hidden copyright traps. For indie filmmakers or influencers on a budget, that's a huge yes plea. The open source party doesn't stop at video, Ace Studio just unveiled Ace Step V1 3.5B, a music generation model that's 15 times faster than large English model approaches. Translation, it produces a four minute track in about 20 seconds on an NVIDIA A100. And because it combines diffusion with a linear transformer conditioned by a deep compression autoencoder, it keeps melody, harmony, and rhythm coherent over the full length. On a desktop RTX 419, the real-time factor jumps above 30, which is absurd. Like GarageBand on rocket fuel. You can guide the structure with text, give me a mellow lo-fi beat, chorus at 90 seconds, 
fade out strings at 330, and the model handles the timeline. They even list hardware benchmarks, A100, 4090, 3090, Mac M2 Max, so you know what to expect. It's Apache 2.0, meaning free for basically anything except disallowed uses like copyrighted track clones. There are caveats, generate past five minutes and the structure might drift, Chinese rap turns out wobbly, and vocals still sound kind of plastic, but for backing tracks or quick demos, it's borderline magical. Anyway, that's the whirlwind. Uh, update your bookmarks, maybe clear out some SSD space for model weights, and keep your eyes on what drops at actual Google I slash O in a couple of weeks, because if Gemini's preview arrived early, you can bet the onstage demo will try to one-up itself. And hey, if all this feels like drinking from a fire hose, welcome to 2025, the year creative tooling stopped waiting for humans to catch up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.